Welcome, Amco, to Tech Time. Good morning, everybody. Jim Everhart here. Today on Tech Time, we're going to talk about common 4L60E issues and how to fix them. Um, there's a, a lot of updates that we're going to talk about today, so let's get started. Today we're going to take a look at the pump ID and issues with the pumps, uh, input shaft ID and issues, three-port drum issues, servo ID and issues, valve body wear issues, and pump wear issues. The updated 4L60E pump with the input shaft sensor went into production in 2006, but it actually started about a year before that. And uh, there's some minor changes that led up to the complete input speed sensor pump, uh, which ended up in 2007. So the first changes were subtle, and you need to be careful because you can get in trouble with these uh, early pumps. There's actually five different uh, combinations. So the first pump from the early one from 97 to 2005 um, had the early style stator support and used the uh, input shaft with no rotor and of course no speed sensor. Then in February, March of 2005, um, the, the subtle changes came into effect. Uh, this pump still had the early stator support, uh, didn't have an input speed sensor, but they shortened the boost valve, and they did this to make room for some changes that were going to come up. And they also changed the TCC apply valve. It only has one spring. So this is kind of a, the first uh, subtle change. A couple of months later, um, they made some other changes. Um, now the input speed, uh, the input shaft, you see the early one here, th there's no rotor there and the rings are that haven't been relocated yet. So this is kind of like the early shaft. Then a couple of months later, like I said, they put the second design stator into this pump. Now this second design stator uh, was put in here for the input speed sensor, but it hasn't been put in yet. So the boss is there, it hasn't been drilled. The input shaft uh, rings were, le were relocated on the input shaft. And the, if you don't uh, take a close look, you, you won't notice that they were relocated because it's only 190 thousandths toward the drum. OK, the, uh, in July of 05, you can see here's a picture of the input speed. Uh, the, the input shaft, there's no rotor on there, but the rings have been moved. Some shafts will have a wide band ID on them, but some shafts don't have the, the wide band. And so there again, you got to measure almost to, to uh, make sure you're working with the right part. Here you can see that they've added the input speed uh, sensor with a plug. Um, this is the second design uh, uh, stator support on here, but there's no input speed sensor. There's a plug there, and this this won't work with you. Can't put an input speed sensor on here, so um, you got to be careful with these. Okay, the second design stator support. You can see the hole here for the input speed sensor. Um, the the input shaft here. The rings are relocated, but yet there's no rotor here yet. So this is, this is another uh, change they made. Then Now here's the completed pump in 2007. This has the input speed sensor. It has the second design uh, stator support, obviously. It has the, uh, the input speed, or the input shaft has the, the rotor. And um, this uh, pump now is, is the complete uh, input speed sensor pump. So like I mentioned earlier, there's like five different uh, designs here leading up to this completed pump. Um, if you get a, a, a job in where you think some of these parts have been changed, uh, we can send you, we have some information that shows all these changes. So just get a hold of the, uh, the hotline and um, 
as most of you know, we have an app now. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show you how to get the app on your phone and on your computer if you don't have it yet. Okay, a picture of the second design stator support. You can see here, I showed you this earlier, there's a hole. This is where the uh, input speed sensor reads. These are the two boost valves. Now, there's, these are the, uh, the early and the late. The late one was only shortened 106 thousandths. So it looks exactly the same as, as the, uh, the early one. So it's very easy to get these mixed up, and you can have run into line pressure problems here. So um, it's very easy to put a short, late boost valve into an early uh, pump. Now with the with the boost valves, there's two sizes: the regular size 421, and then the, the HD size, which is 470. And Sonics also makes a, a 490 for heavy duty use. So, like I said, the, the difference in the early and the late is very minimal. Um, the late is shorter, a little bit shorter. So you always want to measure them if you're not sure. If you install a short late valve into an early support, uh, you're going to have your transmission will slip and have uh, line pressure problems. The second design input shaft, you can see here it has a rotor. It has the rings have been moved toward the drum. So with these, uh, the 4L60 pumps, pay attention to the pumps and the shafts. The parts are very easy to mismatch. Always take apart rebuilt pumps and measure. Whenever, if you buy a rebuilt pump, uh, we we get many calls on this because they're they're just put together without measurements, and you can get mismatches very easily. So always measure them. Always measure the input shaft ring location. Always check the resistance of the input speed harness. It's a good idea to change the harness if it's old, brittle. A uh, good idea to replace it. Pay attention to uh, the boost valve. It's only 106,000 shorter. This match parts can cause a PO716 and a P717. You can get the converter uh, won't fill, burnt clutches in the input drum, no lockup or lockup slip, lockup problems with no codes, and you're, you you get some mismatched parts in here. The transmission may work okay, and then come back, you know, in two weeks burned up. Okay, here's a note on the the torque socket. This is the new design socket. The old sockets uh, won't work on these bolts, as you know. So this is the part number for the, the more torque bit. The GM part number is DT49037. And then Snap-on makes a version of that. That's PMFTS4E. And uh, so that's the part number of that new more torque socket. OK, let's talk about the 3-4 drum. When you're working on these drums, you always want to check the drum for cracks. It's very common to, to see cracks in these drums. You want to heat the drum up in the parts washer and then test the, your shaft. Put it in your arbor press and try to press it out by hand. You should not be able to press the shaft out by hand if, if you have a good shaft. If you can press the shaft out by hand, then go ahead and Loctite it and press it back in. If it's too loose, if, if, you, if it comes out very loosely, it's not a good idea to reuse it. It's your, your best bet is to replace that drum. But if, if it comes out with some difficulty in an arbor press, go ahead, use some red Loctite on it and press it back in. It's, it's not a good idea to remove that shaft. If you can't press it out by hand, just leave it in there and then air check it. If it doesn't leak, then, then don't mess with it. Just leave it as is. If you see leaks, when you do your air test, if you see leaks around the splines, then go ahead and put it, support it in a hydraulic press and press the shaft out, Loctite it and press it back in because that will seal the leak. When you air check the shaft, put a little oil down here 
and see watch for bubbles and then when you're air checking flip it over and, and look for uh, leaks on the other side as well and if you see leaks there then you want to press that shaft out and lock tighten it. Look for cracks. You'll see m real minor cracks around the apply uh, holes for the different clutches. So look at that closely. Look for cracks because you, when they first start to crack, they're very hard to see. Check the 3-4 clutch feed hole. You want to look in here with a flashlight and make sure the feed hole is lined up with the shaft. There are some drums that are that were mismachined, and if if you get one of those, you can get a two-three flare. So look in there, make sure that the hole is lined up with the shaft. This is a Sonex reinforcement kit. Um, if you, this is a good idea to use this uh, on heavy-duty use. What this does, this sleeve goes down around the the drum and it keeps the shaft from spinning out. It, it kind of uh, supports the splines. So the, this kit gives you this uh, reinforcement sleeve and then a different uh, piston seal So the uh, because the, uh, the OE seal that won't work with this. But this is a good idea on heavy duty use to use this uh, sleeve. Keeps the, your shaft from spinning out. Here's a picture of the of stock sun shell. You want to check the, the spin weld for cracks. Look very closely at the spin weld. Look for a T or a W stamp, which designates the heavy duty GM sun shell. Those are good uh, sun shells. If you see a T or a W on it, uh, those, are, those shells have been improved. Check the splines for wear and check the lugs for wear. If you see the lugs are beat up or, or starting to move out, that's an indication that you need to replace your input sprag. So if you see the, any problems with the, those ears there, that's a hint that the, your sprag needs to be replaced. Here's where you'll see the W or T stamp. Here's a picture of the, the Sonic Smart Shell. Again, for heavy duty use, these shells are, are beefed up with a sleeve, and the, as such, they come with a shorter sprag race. So it's a kit that uh, Sonics makes. And you can see here the, the shell on the right. There's a sleeve that over those splines, and it's, it's just like the sleeve in the input drum. It, it keeps those splines uh, and that, uh, that spin well there from breaking. This is a picture of the stock shell again. Okay, let's talk about the servos. There's a, a lot of problems uh, with servos, band adjustments, etc. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Here's a picture of the four different servos. You can see the smallest one on the left um, is for the V6, the small engines, and then it moves up to the uh, the 553 is the small V8, and then the uh, 159, that's a new one that they just came out with that kind of goes in between the Corvette servo and the 553. So uh, that's kind of a uh, yeah, new, something pretty new here. So those are your four uh, OEM servos. And um, you can see by the, uh, the casting number, uh, you know, which, what you have. And with the with your servo um, that you're using, um, if you if you run into problems, your servo is also your uh, two three accumulator. So if you uh, get a four L sixty E that has a two three flare, uh, a lot of times you can correct that two three flare with a, put, putting in the next size up servo. So uh, make sure you clean your mass airflow sensor first. If you still have a two three flare. Um, try the next size up servo. A lot of times that will correct it. Uh, another thing that can cause a 2-3 flare is band adjustment. Here you can see a picture of the, uh, the servo pin. This, this one has three bands. Um, 
there's actually four four different uh, servo pins. They start with a no band, and then a one, two, three band, and then a wide band. And um, but a lot of times, even with the the longest servo pin, uh, your band adjustment's too loose. It's almost impossible to to make your band adjustment too tight on these. So, but if your band adjustment's too loose, uh, that's going to give you a two three flare. It can it can cause uh, other problems too, like a, a slippy one two or three four shift. So, um, always check your band adjustment. And if it's too loose, you can uh, you can get this extendo pin, which goes over the end of your servo pin, and then you can grind it down to dial in your band adjustment. So these are made by uh, Tixol, and you you can get these through uh, your part supplier. Okay, the servo capsule. Here's a picture of the capsule down in the servo. It's a good idea to check this capsule, make sure it's not leaking. If this capsule leaks, this will give you a 2-3 flare. And a lot of times what happens on these capsules is when you, if you wash your transmission and you don't blow it dry, the soap will stick to that ball and cause the servo capsule to leak. And uh, so you always want to dry that servo capsule out with air, rattle that ball around in there, and then check it with solvent. Make sure it doesn't leak. If that servo capsule leaks, um, it'll cause problems. Um, another thing, we don't recommend that you replace the servo capsule with a plug down there. I know a lot of guys do that. It's not a good idea, and um, it could cause problems with the with your one-two shift, especially when the transmission's cold. So, good idea to, if you have a problem with that capsule leaking, replace the capsule. Here's a picture, uh, up close picture of the capsule and the ball. And if that ball, like I said, if there's any debris that gets in between the ball and the capsule, it'll leak, or even you know dried soap. Here's a tool that Fixall makes. Um, you don't ne necessarily need this tool, but this tool puts that capsule right where it's supposed to be. So um, you can just drive it down. It puts it right where it's supposed to be, without damaging it. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about uh, valve body wear. Many valves and bores can be worn, as you guys know. Pay special attention to the TCC regulator bore and the actuator feed limit bore. Those are the two bores that wear out very quickly. And uh, if Sonex makes a valve, it's a good idea to check that valve bore. So if you look on the Sonics website, you can see the different uh, valves they make. Check those bores because you, a lot of times you don't, you won't need a, a valve, but if Sonics makes a valve, then uh, you may need it. So check it. You can download the instructions, and the instructions are free. The Sure Cure Kit outlines the problem areas. The free instructions show you how to test the problem areas. Uh, there's good wet, wet air test and vacuum testing instructions included. And then also, most all Sonex valves now come with, with vacuum testing instructions. So even if you're not buying a valve, if you want to uh, vacuum test a particular area, just print the instructions for that valve, and it, that'll come with your uh, vacuum test. Here's a high wear area in the pressure regulator bore. And uh, this shows you how to wet air test it. Um, th this, these instructions are part of the, uh, the Sure Cure kit. TCC apply valves uh, can be a concern. And you can see here there's three different styles. Uh, the instructions show you how to identify these and uh, how, to, how to a uh, wet air test because th these valves do wear out and can cause lockup problems, 741 codes and uh, lockup problems. So uh, this instructions show you how to check the uh, bores. Okay, today we've covered many parts and differences. The next segment we're going to do on 4L60Es 
we'll cover some drivability issues and how to fix them. Okay, thanks again. Uh, I'm going to show you um, on the next slide uh, how to uh, download the app. This uh, presentation will be put up on the AMCO University along with all the other presentations. So if you missed one, you can go to AMCO U and watch the presentation. Welcome, Amco, to Tech Time.